Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be fully focused on the second trimester, my symptoms, the changes, and everything that I'm preparing for now at this stage of my pregnancy. Um, like I mentioned before, the first video that I put out, uh, I think it was titled like first trimester symptoms or something like that. Um, originally, I had filmed everything about the second trimester with that video because when I did film it, I already had hit uh, the second trimester, but like I told you guys, uh, my camera had cut me off for some reason, so here I am now. I'm going to make a completely separate video, and this is it, um, all about the second trimester, so stay tuned. Okay, so since my camera cut me off last time, I think I'm going to start with this before I get into all the symptoms and changes for this trimester. Um, I didn't get to show my bump in the other video. It was a little bit smaller. It seems to be growing a lot. Um, if not day by day by week, it just completely changes every single week, I feel. Um, and I'm getting more and more out of breath, even though I'm, I'm still considered small. Um, but this is my bump update so far. He's growing really quickly. Um, so, yeah. So, um, while filming this video today, I had a... Uh, ultrasound at 8 a.m. and I am 19 weeks and three days so far so I guess you could say I'm halfway there I'm almost about to hit 20 weeks um, I think next weekend um, the main symptom what would I call it a symptom I think more of a change that I've noticed is I've become a and it was like this the first trimester but it wasn't this dramatic I've become like a huge like early bird and if anyone knows me you know that I hate mornings, I hate waking up, no matter what it is, I'm not a morning person. I could stay up all night and have no problem, but the second it comes to morning, I mean like the second the sun rises, I just don't like mornings, um, and I don't like waking up early. So, um, oh, Leo's crying. <laughs> um, so anyone who knows me knows that I don't... <laughs> Don't, it's like he does this every time I film. It's, everyone who knows me knows I don't like mornings. I'm not a morning person and I never was. And even there were like phases in my life where I tried to be a morning person and it just did not work. I think they say it takes like, what is it, 30 days to, to get into a real habit if you incorporate it into your life. Um, but for some reason during this pregnancy, I just... I actually genuinely enjoy waking up early, which is so weird. Like, I am I can wake up at, like, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Usually, it's 8 a.m., uh, 8 or 9 in between that time frame. And then after that, I'm, like, really, really productive. I don't know if that's what they call nesting or if it's, like, a pregnancy thing, but I'm, like, a lot more productive now in my second trimester um, compared to the first, of course, because I was really nauseous in the first trimester. But even in general, like, I was never this much of a productive person in my life and I'm just like constantly like checking things off crazy it's like I don't even recognize myself it's really weird um but I'm not gonna complain although I know people like to say oh well you should sleep now before the baby gets here because you're not gonna sleep for the next 18 years or whatever but I don't know I can't help it I enjoy waking up early and staying awake um which I think is the reason why I feel healthier too because they do say obviously like Mornings are made for waking up early and sleep is for the nighttime. Um, my sleep schedule for the past like two years before I got pregnant was horrible. Like I would stay up till 6 a.m. and then I would sleep throughout the day and then it was just like a mess, a complete mess. And I guess it adjusted itself on its own. Um, thank God. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Um, it probably won't be as enjoyable to wake up early when the baby comes, but I do hope that my high energy and like my what's the word like my for waking up early and getting things done does at least stay with me for the first like five months after he's born um so that's one thing i'm enjoying that's the main thing i'm really really happy about i have like high energy i like waking up early i'm getting things done i'm very productive so i think that would be like the main thing uh the second thing i don't know if i mentioned this a lot i think i did but i didn't go into detail too much um, is my skin has completely cleared up. I have no foundation on. Um, I had no foundation on in my previous video. I still don't have foundation on in this video. Uh, just bronzer and blush. 
but like that's for all my videos because I don't own foundation I don't wear foundation um because I'm big on skincare and I think a lot of people have noticed that skincare has been taking over the this is not pregnancy related but skincare has been taking over the makeup industry because back then a few years ago makeup everyone was into makeup and makeup and foundation and all these new products but now people are spending more of their money taking care of their skin so that they don't need to buy so much makeup um so i'm enjoying my clear pre-pregnancy skin how it used to be without all like the weird um rashes and uh, I didn't mention this okay so I know this video is about the second trimester but there's something I forgot to mention or I think I did mention but my camera cut out of the video uh, for my first trimester um, what's it called update video so in the first trimester um, at the point I would say right when I start to get nauseous so like week seven uh, my skin started to look off and I know I mentioned I looked sick and I was dehydrated and all that. But I don't mean off by like the color. I mean it was acting weird. So I would wake up and I had like like literally like a rash. And at first it started on the right side of my face. And it was just on the bottom chin area. Um, it was just like little red dots. And I was like, okay, I've studied skin. I know this is definitely a rash. But I still had doubts in my mind. Like is this a rash or is it um, just like acne but it didn't look like acne and deep down I knew it was an acne um because it wouldn't go away no matter what I used and usually with acne if you're using the right products and you know your skin type uh you should be able to clear up any breakout that comes up so it would not go away no matter what I did and then after a while it just got horrendous and it got really really bad and then at that point the entire bottom of my face here um just was filled with little red dots and it looked I mean I'm sure it looked like acne to other people but it was not acne it was uh, actually a heat rash which sucks because um, when I mentioned it to my family doctor she had no idea what it was and she kind of just brushed it off which which really sucks because I feel like um, family practitioners or doctors aren't really obviously they don't focus on the skin part um, of our health but um, I self-diagnosed myself and then confirmed it with a pharmacist. My husband's a pharmacist as well. And he confirmed that too. And he knew it was an acne. And he was like, no, this is like a rash. Um, so before taking any medications or anything like that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait it out. What if it goes away? You know, I'm going to give it time. I'd rather not take medication. Um, it didn't go away for like two months. And then it spread to the other side, which really confirmed for me that it was in fact a heat rash. Um, because anytime I would take a hot shower, it would just get inflamed like crazy. And it was horrendous because then at that point, it was on both sides of the bottom of my face. So I had completely almost clear skin all over. And then just like this horrendous like heat rash. It kind of looked like a, like the rash babies get when they get really hot. Um, so I needed a antibiotic for that. I just quickly grabbed the antibiotic that I'm no longer using at the moment. But if it does flare up again, I know I will be back on it. I use this for about a month. Um, this is the benzoyl peroxide clindamycin kit. It is safe for pregnancy. So far, I haven't noticed um, that it's been dangerous or that my doctor said it was dangerous. She approved it. And I made sure that my OB went over the ingredients multiple times before I even put it on my face. And it's been great. It got rid of the infection, I'd say, within two weeks. So it's just a mixture of benzoyl peroxide and clindamycin, um, 5% I believe. So this completely killed off um, the rash and the rash was bacterial I believe. So it was like a bacterial infection which is why it was spreading. Which is so weird because no one ever tells you like, like yeah they say that pregnancy is weird and you get all these weird symptoms and changes but no one really told me that you could get like a bacterial skin infection from pregnancy. Um, I don't know if that's because my um what's it called growing baby and because baby was taking everything from me if my system was just weaker at fighting off infection so it must have been something weird like that um thankfully it's fully gone as you can see so this was my lifesaver and like i said when i did uh go to the pharmacy they did tell me uh yeah it's a bacterial infection specifically because it is spreading um, it was an acne, like I said. I was right about my self-diagnosis, uh, thankfully. Uh, so that was tough, and I believe it went away, like, right before I hit the second trimester, so...
I use this for about a month and this is really I know it's 5% but it's really strong so you don't want to apply a big amount it makes you sensitive to the sun so of course always wear SPF at least 50 um, and moisturize right after because it basically dries up and kills up kills up <laughs> kills any bacteria um, present on the skin so that was another thing um, back to the second trimester um, my nails have been growing like crazy, but my nails have always been that way. Like, I could cut them and they just whoop, grow right away. Um, but I think it's, like, triple the amount now, which is great. Uh, some people may say that's thanks to the prenatals, but I've been on and off with my prenatals. Um, for those of you who don't know, prenatals are actually, which I could be wrong, but from what I've heard, prenatals are not for the baby. They're actually for you because baby will take whatever he or she needs from your body uh, in order to grow healthy and strong, uh, but then you're left uh, without the vitamins and minerals that you usually would have. So apparently the prenatals are for you and not the baby. So when I heard that, I have to admit, I did get kind of lazy. Um, I still take them, obviously, but I mean, like, if I, if I miss a day or two, it's not, like, the biggest deal to me because before, in the first trimester, I really thought they were for the baby, and I was really strict at taking them, but then when I found out they were for me, I was like, eh, it is what it is. If I miss a day or two, it's not a big deal. Um, but I am still taking them, of course, and I do plan on continuing uh, to take them because they do make a big difference, especially in my energy levels. I think that's because of the iron or something like that. Um, and the prenatals I take are are one of the actually, I think the only brand, the first response prenatals that have calcium in them. I'm not a huge uh, milk drinker. I don't like milk, unless it's chocolate milk, uh, but we all know that's not the healthiest. Um, I do eat a lot of dairy in my diet, but like actual glass of milk, you'll never see me drinking, unless it's almond milk. Uh, so that's why I'm on those specific uh, prenatals. I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, obviously the bump. It grew overnight and it's really true when they say your bump grows overnight because I had uh, a six pack and I'm not even joking like I had like a literal six pack I don't work out or anything but I just I've always been skinny no matter how much I eat my stomach has always been flat and I had actual abs so it's really weird for me to have this stomach right now and I'm not used to it but of course I'm enjoying every second of it um, so yeah I don't know where I was going with this. Where was I going? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the bump really does grow overnight. And then at that stage when you do notice that it grows overnight, it's just kind of nonstop growth, like constantly. Um, heavy breathing, of course. One thing in the second trimester, which is not like the biggest deal because I'm used to it, um, is the allergies. Apparently, this is like a thing that some women get like second trimester allergies where you'll wake up with like a stuffy nose and then throughout the day it kind of lessens and goes away. Um, so I find myself constantly blowing my nose and I constantly need tissues in my purse. I'm like this sick little old lady that's always sneezing and I don't know. But yeah, it's obviously uh, allergies because I had allergies in the past and it's exactly like that where you're constantly blowing your nose. Thankfully, the uh, stuffy nose goes away throughout the day. So it's only when I first wake up or usually actually I've noticed before bed um, just a lot of congestion. So, yeah, that's another thing. Like, second trimester allergies, I didn't have that in the first trimester. But like I said, it's not a big deal. Honestly, all of these symptoms I don't mind because I have high energy and zero nausea. And I'm able to eat. And baby is loving food. And I know I mentioned before that one of my biggest cravings was Subway. Uh, that comes and goes. But baby boy really likes sandwiches. I don't know what it is. I've heard other women say this who are pregnant with boys. Um... My biggest craving is just like sandwiches in general, whether it's a veggie sandwich or like a chicken sandwich or like, I don't know, whatever it is, even like burgers, just sandwiches in general are another symptom um, of the second trimester is back pain, which so far is not really, really bad. It's tolerable at this point, but um, if I lay on my back for too long or in a certain position, then it basically feels like my back is being crushed and I'm sure that's because of all the extra weight and the way baby has shifted everything inside my abdomen <laughs> um yeah so not only is it back pain I get like these leg cramps or spasms or whatever they're called um on my right side of my thigh 
it just hurts really bad if I stay in one position for too long. I notice it's mainly if I lay on my back. So um, it's just really painful, but I mean, it's not a big deal. And I know it's going to get worse. So uh, anything that's happening now, I'm just tolerating and riding through the wave, as they say. Um, because I know it's, I'm just going to get bigger and bigger from this point on. I did want to mention my weight gain, but uh, unfortunately I only had a scan this morning. I didn't see my OB. I don't see my OB until March 10th um, for my, I think, I think 20 week, 21 week appointment. Um, my weight in general, I think, I don't think I talked about this before in my video. Or on my channel, I mean. Uh, my weight in general is usually in the 80s to the 90 pounds range. Um, Pre-pregnancy, I believe I was uh, 90 pounds on the dot, I think. The most I've ever been was like 93. And that's because I was like really, really going into like big meals and all that. And I don't gain weight, so that was like a big deal for me. I think that's the most I've ever hit. I've never hit... From my knowledge, 100 pounds in my life ever, and that's because of my height. I'm five around five zero, like just under five one, like about to hit five one. Um, so my weight pre pregnancy, like I said, was about 90 pounds on the dot. In the first trimester, when I had a lot of nausea and I was vomiting a lot, um, I went down to 88. So I think that's like I lost two pounds. And then now I have no idea what I weigh. I have not weighed myself. I don't remember what my last weight check was at my last appointment but I do remember they said I did gain a few pounds which is good because throughout these two trimesters I haven't gained zero which blew my mind because I'm like how is all of this going on yet I've put zero weight on so I think if I'm gonna guess I feel like I've put at least five to seven pounds on now even though it doesn't look like it I know I'm still really skinny um but I feel heavier so if I haven't gained at least five to seven pounds at my next appointment I'm gonna be really shocked um, I will try and mention it in the next video if I do film anything pregnancy related um, in March. So be sure to uh, be on the lookout for that. But um, I think out of all the things I mentioned overall so far, I forgot the most special and bestest one ever. Um, and that's baby kicks. I know, I didn't think I would feel them so early. Um, if I can even call it early because this is my first baby and they say usually you won't feel your first baby until 20 weeks ish and if your placenta I think is anterior um, but your placenta I believe can be positioned one of two ways which is the first one is a uh, posterior placenta which I think means blocking the baby so the baby is more towards the back um, actually facing your back um, and not in the front of your uterus. Uh, and I think there's anterior. I could be like completely switching them up. But anyway, um, if your placenta is blocking the baby, you may not even feel kicks till after 22 weeks. And that's pretty late for most people. Um, so I just did a little bit of quick research on Google. Um, so posterior placenta means your placenta attached to the back of your uterus, which, is, which would make you... Um, not as able to feel your baby as soon as others would feel their baby kick. Mine is anterior from what I've been told. I know that it can shift apparently throughout the pregnancy, but so far it's still anterior, which I'm really happy about. Um, none of them are good or bad. It just depends where your placenta decides to attach um, in your uterus. Um, but I started feeling kicks at about 18 weeks. I think it was exactly 18 weeks, two days. Um, when I felt him and it was like 3, 4 a.m. And I don't even know how this happened. I think I was laying down um, and everyone at home was asleep. And I just remember being so bored and I didn't think it would actually work. But I was like, what would happen if I like poke this baby right now? So I started like gently like poking him to see if he would react. And in no way, like I said, I was around in my 18th week. Did I think that he would actually kick me back and that I would feel it that early? Um, and then all of a sudden, which thankfully I got it on video, um, I felt a kick really, really low near my abdomen. And I literally actually saw like a flick and like my stomach moved. And that was probably the most uh, magical, most mind-blowing moment of my life this far. Because it honestly, 
when you're pregnant, especially with your first baby, you don't really feel or believe that there's like a human inside of you until you go to the multiple scans and you see the baby kicking or feel the baby kicking. So when I felt that, I was like, oh my gosh. And then he kicked me again, I think another two times, uh, two or five times because I was like, I have like an app where I like, um, I like count and time the kicks. Uh, and then that was it. And then I never felt anything after that throughout the night. Um, the next day in the morning, Oh my gosh, uh, he was kicking like crazy and um, like I said, I was shocked because I was only 18 weeks um, and he was just moving around like crazy. Like at one point I would feel him kick me right under my belly button and then he would move to the side and he would like shift and then I just felt kicks everywhere, which is so cool because he would also like interact with me. Um, I haven't tried like the tricks they gave yet. I want like the baby to start kicking. Uh, to either do like jumping jacks, uh, to drink something really, really cold or eat something really cold like a popsicle or like ice water. Um, and there's like a third one. Oh yeah, to eat something sweet, I think. And then of course you can like poke and they'll like kick you back. I, I guess for most babies they'll do that because my son really reacts when I do that. Um, but yeah, that morning he was kicking like crazy and then I filmed it again and thankfully I caught it. And in the video, there's like a huge kick. And that was like one of the biggest kicks I ever felt. I obviously don't see like an actual like hand or feet yet because I still am really small and he's still really tiny. But I know that later on, maybe like in the 30th week, I will start to be able to like distinguish between a foot and a hand, which I'm so excited about. It's such a weird thing to be excited about, I know. But um, yeah, and then the other night we were watching a movie on the couch and we were like Netflixing and then he was kicking like crazy. I think he enjoyed the movie that we were watching. Um, so that that's just like one of the things I really, really enjoy. I just constantly feel kicks throughout the day. Um, from what I've been told, I've been told that he's like a pretty active baby compared to most. And I think boys are known to be more active in the womb than girls. I'm not sure uh, if that's like a true fact or whatever, but that's just what I've been told. Um, so yeah, feeling like baby kicks has been the best thing about the second trimester and um, it really caught me off guard because I didn't think I'd feel him kick till at least 20 to 21 weeks. So that's been amazing and um, just like the beginning of my pregnancy, I go to the washroom at night about literally, and I'm not exaggerating, 12 times, which sucks because it ruins my sleep, but um, I want to say that I've gotten used to it, but I don't think I'll ever get used to it because the second you go, you go back to sleep, you get comfortable, and then it's like literally five seconds later, you have to go again. And it's the most annoying thing ever because it's not like I'm constantly chugging water, which I am throughout the day, but before bed, I try to limit my water intake so I don't keep going. But for those wondering, because I know a lot of people probably wonder this, what it feels like when like the baby kicks, the best way I can put it is you know when you have like a bag of popcorn in the microwave and it just starts like the second it starts popping and going off that's exactly what it feels like it's kind of like a popping sensation so technically picture your stomach as like a microwave and then the baby kicks are like popcorn popping and that's exactly what it feels like to me and I know a lot of other moms have said the same so I think that's like the best way to describe it it's really really weird it also feels like there's like an alien um, interacting with you so that's that's how I would put it the best that I could the final symptom um that I've noticed in the second trimester that I didn't have in the first trimester is I believe they're called Braxton Hicks and they feel like almost identical to menstrual cramps but for me a lot less painful and like they're a little more mild um it's basically the same thing as when you'd have like the menstrual cramps um it just feels like a lot of cramping and tightness in the abdomen, more specifically like in the lower area, not like up top. Um, and I've been getting those maybe like twice a day. I don't know if that has to do with dehydration. I don't think so because I chug water like a crazy person. Um, I heard they're not good if you get them too often because they can put you into early labor. But for the most part, majority of women start getting them in the second trimester. Um, even this early on so yeah that's been another thing that like kind of freaked me out I was like wait a minute why am I cramping right now because it was really scary but they aren't painful or dangerous um so far and I'm keeping my eye on them and of course if I notice anything like drastic or really bad then I would bring that up to my um OB
I think that sums up uh, most of the second trimester. Um, I will have a third trimester video, I'm sure sometime in the summer before baby A gets here. Um, but I think that's mostly everything I wanted to touch on today. Um, I was really disappointed when my camera cut me off in the other video, so I'm really happy I got to film this today and I had some time. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions uh, whatsoever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or if you follow me on social media, you can also message me there. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!